Welcome once again to Syntax Error, your pretentious philosophical pedantic podcast ostensibly about video gaming and related topics therein. Warning, this podcast contains mature language, content, and spoilers. You have been warned. And welcome back to our Halloween special edition of Syntax Error this season for 2016. We are going to do horror games, or what we think qualifies as such, and some of our favorite ones. I, of course, and Mr. Leon Scott Kennedy, a.k.a. Scott Thurlow. I'm here with Faces Engineer Isaac Clark, a.k.a. Louis Duran. Hey, good evening. <laughs> and uh, your old uh, reliable working Joe number 507, J. Ian Manzer. Syntax error. And uh, we're lucky to have Sambi himself <laughs> taking a break from his rapping tour of the world, Chris Morgan. Who do you voodoo? I voodoo you, sir. Bitch. Thank you. So, let's start off. We're going to start off by naming like our top two to three, maybe, horror games that we liked or games that we thought at least were scary and so forth and within the genre. And we'll go to E first. So, I'm going to start off with my childhood of sorts. Mm. With Freud it up. Silent Hill 2, which I think is still the scariest game ever made. I like psychological horror quite a bit. But I... Th- I'd have to say Silent Hill 1 probably terrified me more than Silent mm. Hill 2. That's fair. Silent Hill 2 was a be- was a near perfect game. Mm. So I have to give you credit for that. The second choice I'm going to make is not a horror game at all, but a recent-ish <laughs> mm. uh, kind of walking sim called Gone Home, which is utterly terrifying in the environment they developed with the, it's sort of like coming home to a dark to your dark house to a Stephen and, King house yeah and of. you kind of like it, it there's an like uncanniness to it yeah. that like I was always expecting something awful to happen I actually had to stop playing and look it up just to make sure that I wasn't going to die of a heart attack <laughs> from some, a jump okay. scare and it turned out nothing perfect happens in the game it's just the mood is set to terrify you sure I mean it's a fun pick I mean of course I would agree with Silent Hill it's Probably went into that a bit late, uh, later on. But yeah, good picks. All right. Uh, Louis, what do you got? Uh, so for me, if I had to bring up one most recently that I've played, it would be Dead Space. Mm-hmm. That's, I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. That's, the first I one that, or me, two? I think you uh, said two. No, the first one, I think. But the second one was just as good. I mean, it was just a longer game. It was a little bigger, but I'll say they're pretty it kept close. the elements of what it needed. I, I played a little of three and that it kind of tossed aside the horror <laughs> yes. aspect, but I mean, everything from the soundtrack to just making you feel isolated and just some of the, they, it, they had everything in that, that you want in, in the genre, like jump scares also very like just a creep me as atmosphere plus space. Like, sure. I agree. Space should be like in theory, like the most, a uh, 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 well in, in, you know, related to horror inducing atmospheres just because of the very nature of it. Agree. Um, I would say 45, 55 split for me on Dead Space 1 and 2. Maybe 1 gets to 55. It's close. Close, though. Yeah. Dead Space I mean, 3 was funny because the game was okay, but the DLC for the game was awesome. Yeah. I was waiting for one of us to bring that up. Uh, agreed. It's It was better story, I was telling you guys, precast, uh, I think, than the Act 3 of the main game of Dead Space 3 itself. And yeah, would you say, Louis, that Dead Space 3 caught like a Res Evil s- syndrome, if you will? They like ramped up the action, so there's therefore yeah. the tension yeah. is gone. Mm. Well, it was funny was because, I, and I don't want to jump the gun on mine, but Dead right. Space scared me. It's the you next one, anyway. Yeah. De- it, the first yeah. Dead Space scared me. Mm-hmm. And while the DLC to the third one didn't scare me in the same way, the atmosphere was so great. Yes. It actually kind of like, you were it, it was unnerving. It was very, very good. No, I agree with that. And so, you know, I enjoyed them all. We'll speak about it later. We'll talk about Dead Space. We'll come back to that. So, uh, but interesting that you both chose chose that. So, what do you got, Chris? Aside um, from that, if not that, well, I'm going to say the one the games that scared me the most, and I just said Dead Space, the first one. Um, I also have to say, um, Alien Isolation mm. was just had me on the Good edge one. of my seat. It was just a nail biter, and uh, um, I jumped many times, and then uh, my wife walked in, and I jumped when she did. So, <laughs> it's a very immersive game. Mm-hmm. It's it's fantastic. doubly immersive. Yeah, um, I'm also going to. Uh, say uh, we'll get to this later. Undead Nightmare had some things yeah. that really kind of I knew you'd pick that, but it was good. Well, yeah, I mean there were parts of that were were legitimately scary. Um, yeah. and then you know the nostalgic part of me. Uh, my first horror game in kind of the new format. Um, 
was Resident Evil 2. Yes. And I played that twice. It's my fucking pick. But yeah, I, pl- I, I, stayed a- I played that in two days. I played it as one character and the other character. And I have to say, Go on. that was a creepy ass thing and it gave me a couple jump scares. So uh, I agree. So it's interesting. Like I just could have jumped my own gun there. Yes, I agree. Resident Evil 2 was the first game I played. I, I played on N64. That sort of like actually terrified me as a kid, like 12, 13, like at great atmosphere. It was uh, one of the tensest ones because uh, resources, e, as you're saying, and we'll talk about it later, were so scarce. You had to manage it very well. But also the frustrating thing, like retroactively, retrospectively, is that you couldn't see where you were fucking aiming. It was so like annoying, like just gameplay wise. It was like it became frustrating and that like sort of took away from the horror aspect of it. So that's why I'm going to vote. My number one pick is Resident Evil 4. Built, it took a lot of the things from 2 that I liked, and also from Nemesis, right? And, and I like uh, enjoy Nemesis as well. Mm-hmm. But A, they let you have a fucking laser pointer. Thank Christ I can see where I'm aiming now. But the story of it, well, what, as well, as I was describing to you guys, Resident Evil 4 is a fucking B-horror movie of games. It knows that. It plays with that. It has fun with it. It takes itself just serious enough. The big joke of it is the setup is you're Leon Kennedy again from 2. So you're the same character from Resident Evil 2. And your mission, opening missions, go save the president's daughter in a creepy village where Resident Evil shit is going down. So, no. I loved it. I still think it stands as time. I played it, uh, the remake, for just now, previously for this episode. And my second pick might be something like... See, I... Here, I'll throw this out to you guys. You think Bioshock counts? Yeah. I actually do. I think it had its moments, but... I, I, That's the thing, but, really. Yeah, going. Like, but... It, do you like Bioshock because of its horror elements, or do you like it for its thematics? Both. Here's All the thing. above. You guys are right. Like, it's not quite. It's not outright a horror game. Again, we'll delve into this. But I agree. It's not. I wouldn't necessarily put it in the category. But there are parts of it that are creepy that creep me out. I'd say it's a. But this wasn't. I think it's enough to get there. I, I'd say it's quite. like a. It's like a science fiction horror game. I mean, because. There were a couple yes, of things but... that were chilling, like the Spicers, just, you know, them talking themselves. Sure. I mean, you're in a creepy world of fighting monsters. Yes, I get it, but Cody. I think this makes an interesting segue into discussing what, what actually counts as a... Because you can have horror... Like, for instance, here's a great one. Thief 2. Did any of you play that? I didn't. Oh, no, I played no, I Thief not. 4. I played the remake of yeah. it. Never played but 2. Thief 2 had a great horror level. Where the rest of the game would not at all count wasn't, as a horror. Wasn't like that. Mm. Now, is it have to be intended to be horrific? Uh, a horror game to be count as a horror game? Like Dead Space, for instance, is is science fiction, but it's a horror game first and foremost, and that's what sure. they're trying to. That's what they're Bi- working so with. Bioshock yes. has body horror to it. No, you're absolutely but right. But I don't that. know if it's intended to be hard, but. Can you be a horror game without intending to be? Like those are kind of questions yeah. I'm posing. Uh, those are very good questions. Uh, I want to answer the last one you actually said. That I think you can. Like certainly, I think we can agree. We've seen games like, for example, uh, Stephen Amosi, who's not present here tonight, but has mentioned to us off cast that he, a game we reviewed in bonus points, uh, Binding of Isaac, a Rebirth. That we we all love that game. It's awesome. Is it quite hard? It has like you know creepy ish design to it. At least to the enemies and so forth, but it it was that the intent of it like outright per se. Okay, so I would like to parse down this concept. So on one hand, you have the Silent Hills, and you have the Resident Evil. At least the initial sure. Resident so, Evils. Yeah, so it calls to back hard. to the Resident Evil yes. anniversary uh, yeah. that we did. But yeah, I agree with it still. But then you have things like um, Secret of Mana, which was an RPG for the SNES, mm. and that had two levels or. I would say three levels, Two actually. Two or three dungeons with, or uh, This char- character called Thanatos, who was very horror-themed. Mm. Uh, the music, the atmosphere, you were in this, like, these ruins with, like, this fog to them. It worked really well, but I would not classify Secret of no. Man as a horror. I completely get at it. All, even though, uh, so where does the, like, how far do you have to go before you cross over that part? Binding of Isaac's a great example of that because there. There's a lot of body horror in Binding of Isaac and a lot of thematic horror to yes. it. But I don't know if it qualifies as. So that's closer, but where does it cross over? No, I agree. Well, what do you guys think? Um, I was sure, Ian was talking about a couple different things I was, I was latching yeah, you're on You're throwing to. a lot of questions at once. Yeah, man. yeah. Um, I'm trying to Go sort on. them all out. Um, 
well, for the for the question as to what makes a horror game, are are you talking about what elements, or do you how much? I guess we'll like say. A, how about this? What in quotes qualifies to be a in quotes horror game? Okay. Um. Yeah, something that does have the overall structure where, you know, th- there's um, uh, damn, uh, Skyrim, Skyrim. There's a couple parts in Skyrim that yes. I thought were really creepy and chilling, but I would not call Skyrim a horror game. Exactly. Um. Yeah. You know, sure. but we could say that there are certain games that have horror elements to it, um, and I think we're all going to talk about the Fallout DLCs later. But um, you know, it's, but I, as far as I certainly will. But, but yeah, as far go as on. horror goes, for me, it's all, it's really all about atmosphere, and also, but it's also going to be supported by a good story. And then I, I, I'd be remiss if I there's a game called Left 4 Dead, which is basically yes, an action I was waiting game, for one of us to get to that, but. It has one of the most amazing triggers for me in terms of scaring the shit out of me. They have this thing called the witch, and you're and you're. If anyone remembers that? Yeah. Whoever's played Left 4 Dead, you know and what I'm talking about. You hear this like weeping, this silent, you know, and it's just the most unnerving thing because you don't know where it is. It's good sound design. And if you um, are too close to the witch, you know, uh, she'll attack you, and she's a she's a hard. Um, it, it's on higher level difficulties. It's a one hit kill. Like it doesn't matter. Like if she sees yeah. you, you're dead. And um, but she is really freaking scary. But the game itself, even though it's supposed to be a horror game, has its creepy moments. But it's more of an action horror game. See, that's how I feel about a lot of the games that sometimes they classify themselves like Resident Evil. The one and two, yes. Yeah. But beyond that, like I, I, I just can't. I can't put them in that Resident category. Resident Evil Six That's was just... an anime. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally a fucking anime. Kind of. well, appara- I play- it, the most it, recent it, one it I was... played was racist, apparently, and it, yeah, it makes a good you didn't case think for it. it. What, your five wasn't racist. It definitely was. No, I know. But, I mean, that's but, the big but thing. It was definitely. Sigma it was all it. action. Like, it's though, known for that. But that's that's one thing. Yeah. I, it, the it also was definitely sh- veered. Like, be, like regardless of that, it just was a shitty game, and also they randomly like tripped over racism for no reason. It didn't make any sense. But go on. Actually, what's kind of funny about this is uh, in the Uncharted games, to bring it to, <laughs> I think there's a good parallel to be made between mm-hmm. the fact that the Uncharted is an action adventure game that occasionally delves into, like, like the fir- you ever sure. play the first one where they actually have the swarms of, like, unkillable enemies attacking you? Like, that's actually very tense moments mm. where Resident Evil is trying to be horror first, but immediately serves an action adventure. To the point where yeah, it's sure. no longer horror at all. Well, at least later on, of course. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Well, but no, like I guess I'll say like something you said just reminded me of Louis to answer one of your original mm-hmm. questions. He, I guess the most cynical way be like if a game market it's itself as horror, like on the box, literally, like you know the trailers or whatever, like a new horror game or whatever, like coming from whoever is developing it, right? So sure, they can claim they can be, but that's sort of a facetious answer on my part. Like I would agree with what you something Chris said atmosphere i think right like you know you you can tell when you're making a horror game and or movie like you know if it's competent enough it'll show through that that's what they're going for go on uh-huh, but hmm? to provide an example i just it, gone home has 100 percent a horror uh atmosphere trappings yes but uh, mm, but that okay. was your defining characteristic of what makes a horror game the atmosphere i'm saying that here's a game right. that has the atmosphere of horror game but is not, and it's not a horror game it's so true. all right you might have got me with that you guys got I don't know. for me sometimes it I have to feel it. It's very it has to be a cathartic experience for me. So maybe that it's obviously a bias, very, very, very sure, of course. It's gonna be subjective thing. a lot more but than usual. I, I would make a good argument that like Doom for whatever reason, like it struck for me like it struck a nerve and it had you know, the soundtrack that go went with it with some of the levels sure. like they were very cryptic. Yes. I- uh, just I mean the overall atmosphere, the sounds that the, the monsters made when they saw you, this, the way they looked, and then also <laughs> you, yeah. I mean they they had all the scary movie elements. Like you walk into a room, all of a sudden you hear somebody behind you, all the lights turn off, well, and just all you see are eyes, like or things just coming at you. Sure, no, I don't disagree. I was going to say the same thing about Alien Isolation, um, because. Dead Space was great because they did a lot with the sound design. You did, you could hear the creature moving even though you, it was, you knew it was going to come out of one of the vents, but you could hear it moving and wasn't sure where it was. Alien Isolation took that to the next level. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to the point... <laughs> That's and, true. I mean, so you had the atmosphere, but I, my whole point is I'm really... Something you were saying about it, I, the, the sound design for these games is really, really, really important. I mean, part of the immersion is 
if they can give you some perspective of where the sounds are coming from, so you're not really sure where it is. Um, oh, you are sure, but you know it's like close to you. Well, either yeah. way, in alien isolation, yeah. do you know how that, many times? Yes, you know how long know you stayed in say. walkers just to, yes. you know? Yes, it, uh, it's scaring the shit out of me. Chris was bullied by the alien back in high school and just stuck him in lockers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean I'm gonna agree. Like that's like I I said Bioshock in the second one, and we start that sort of kicked off mm-hmm. our discussion here. But I think isolation might be at least in modern times, in the last say five years. Definitely one of the best horror games, and it, and it obviously intent alien uh, like you know they're, lo- they're using the franchise, of course, so you know it's already set up as such. It's a presupposition, if you will. So I actually want to build off of something Louis said a, okay. a little while ago, which I thought was a great. So you know the atmosphere, and then you have you, you mentioned cathartic. Uh, the game has to be cathartic, and that in a way presupposes that there's a level of difficulty and challenge, and that's why alien isolation. To bring it back to that. Yeah. Is you can't beat the alien till the very end. It is an ever present threat that you can't stop. And the minute you can, it provides that cathartic feeling. That would also remove we- Gone Home from that list because it does because have there's have no that cathartic provided, challenge yeah. to it. In a, oh, go on, I'm sorry. I don't but, wanna... No, I think those are two really important else, aspects. Yeah, I agree with atmosphere that. and I think that's challenge well, and a cathartic payoff. I think that's well which pointed is out. Also, why I don't think that the like. Resident Evil Five works because there isn't that. I there's agree. not that challenge yeah. beforehand, where the payoff is just the slaughter, and that's not uh, emotionally it's not cathartic, cathartic at all. Yeah. Either but way, yeah. the, the cool thing about Alien Isolation, and th- this really is probably one of the best games, probably the best horror simulator ever, is that they they gave you For the now. action when you needed it. Like the whole game is a cat and mouse game, the entire game. And then you get to these certain points of the game where it becomes an action game and it provides you with a nice respite. You're like, boy, I'm really, you know, I've never been so happy to fight like androids or, <laughs> you know, be able to have the alien in my sight so I could throw Molotov cocktails at it, or, you know. But that once that ended, all of a sudden you're like, ah, and then you're back into like playing cat and mouse in it. And mm. I mean, there's just levels of catharsis in in Alien Isolation. It is like a goddamn near perfect game. Not great. It's it's a damn good game. But I want to mention my thing we, we said. So things that are horror levels, but not the game itself is not. So I think one of our, my favorite ones is Raven Home level from Half-Life 2. Mm. It's there. It's awesome. But then the whole game isn't like that. But you go to Raven Home and like they even set it up. They're like. Alex, whatever, is like, yeah, we don't go to Raven Home anymore. Guess what? Time to go to Raven Home, and have you know that's where the head crab things are from, and all that, like the classic things. Like, it's it's a change up from what you were been playing in Half Life till then. It's only one level. It happens. It's it's a longer level, sure, but then it ends, and then you go on back to normal Half Life stuff. So, like, if that was its own thing, and the whole game was like that, it would be a hard game. But that's just my example of that something that's in a game that isn't overtly itself horror well i want to bring up this one point just for the fact of that we're bringing like to reference something really random okay this game i played called unfinished swamp yes which was a nice game except for the third level which is one of those kind of you're in a dark forest and these spiders come down and the trick they use for um uh, shock value is that the sound of the spiders attacking you comes from your controller on the ps4 mm. rather than the tv oh, it's the only oh, sound wow. In Some the games have done game that. Alien does Isolation that. had parts where it did that. A too. number of them did that. So, so, so we'll talk about like mechanics to exploit, but yes. they did that, that. That like that is you're you're trained so much to expect the sound coming from one direction, sure. yeah. so it's jarring. That, oh, yeah. it makes you jump because. <laughs> sure. uh, no, that's a good point. D- no. Dying Light was also really good about that because anytime anybody contacted you from your settlement, you know it would come through your. Um, the, your controller, but usually it was at a time where you were being chased by something. Something mm-hmm. was chasing you. Yeah. You were in yeah. your dune buggy. They're like, help us. They're like, dude, I'm getting chased by like a dude, horde of zombies like... right now. I can't help you right now. <laughs> sure. So, um... No, you're right. I mean, and that likes a pretty good one. I think that was the game that Dead Island wanted to be and sort of was eventually. Like, finally got a good version of it. I'm going to say this, and I said this before, but Dying Light, both the game and the DLC are great. But the ending on both of them, I it was the only yeah, was weak, weak part. For whatever me. though, like. But the, I mean, I would. My whole point is, I would say they're worth playing. Actually, that may bring us to another point that we can talk about aspect, if you will, story wise, right? So versus gameplay, I guess, or just straight up like you know, mechanic stuff, because some of them, like I think, Alien does a good job, although I would say sixty percent on 
mechanics which is why it makes a good game yeah. for story's fine it's a fine setup i guess and if you're a fan of the alien uh mythology if you will you'll get something out of it that way but other games like may not quite do like ha- have a background to do that so how about this i'll open up to you guys how much do you think a good story weighs over uh the the sort of mechanics the tension building mechanical wise um i was gonna say i'm gonna bring up two games um Obviously, I'm going to bring up um, Undead Nightmare and Dying Light because... What you just said, but sure. Yeah, no, no, no. Expand. Um, because Undead Nightmare is just... I don't know how to describe it, but Red Dead Redemption is one of my favorite games ever. And this was a horror version of Red Dead Redemption. It was Red Dead with fucking zombies, really. It's like the elevator pitch. Yeah, but, you know, so... I don't remember, you know, the story was one of those things where you have, you have to look for this mask or something. I don't quite remember, but the strength, but there are some amazing things that happen in this game. And one of the things I love good writing wise, like it, even if the main story is kind of, you know, by the numbers or, hmm. you know, generic, if you will. Sure. And I'm not saying this game is, I'll save that for dying light, but, um, <laughs> okay. yeah, but you run into this woman, uh, this, in, in this haberdashery in the town and she starts talking about, um, like, how her father was killed and her mom and her mourned or no, her mom was already dead and she's going on. It sounds like she's got this happy family life and slowly and slowly she slips and things like my dad used to hit my mom, but it's okay. And yeah, then the it's a dysfunctional of- family all turn into yeah. fucking zombies. <laughs> it's and a it, funny kind of slow roll. It really. was just this like amazing, amazing character moment. And, um, dying light had a very by the number of story, but I, I think Scott and I all both agree the side quests and those stories and those side quests were really, really well written. Yes, I do agree with that, of course. And you can check out our v- PvP of Dying Light that we did back in the day. But no, like it's a, I call it the Fallout 4 effect, I guess. I'm naming it right now in the sense that you remember a lot of cool things about tangential side quests and you know, side objectives versus the main plot, which is sort of like there, but you sort of forget about it. Okay, so I've been taking some notes for on the more academic side of this. So we already established atmosphere and the uh, cathartic. Hmm. So I uh, obviously the uncanny is a big part of this. You know, whether you're doing with body horror, or zombies, whatever, they're manipul- sure, whatever manipulations fear, of maybe. your expectations yeah. of um, sorry that. So you have characters really, which are uh, as when you when you when I f- hear people often reference the like, horror games. As you were just doing, it's a character, like side characters or yeah. characters that are memorable. Or, uh, Scott, I was talking precast, you were saying that Left 4 Dead had almost no characters, but that's just an action game rather than a horror. Yeah, game. And, so, all the, and all the quests were just to get yeah. stuff. But I was going to say that the thing about the... If you can call I, them quests, but... Just to add to what we were saying about the overall story, yeah. part of what these side quests do and the characters you meet, that's like kind of world building. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, you can kind of forgive when the flaws in well, the overall story yeah. because they've built this complete world. So, also, I agree with you on the taught mechanics that the w- one thing to break you out of a horror game so in the, it, when you're not dying because of Something your failure, your, your failure or of your, skill. Your, yeah. your failure to survive <laughs> but because of uh, your character doesn't turn correctly or it's difficult to aim yes. or something of that nature. Exactly. Or it's Silent Hill Homecoming and you're battling a creature and they've only given you like five shotgun shells yeah, and it's well, impossible to move on. It's possible that you fucked up and wasted the uh, limited resource they gave you. No, I fight enough Silent balls. Hill to know that you don't shoot your weapons sure. unless you but, absolutely I mean, I agree with what you just said, uh, Ian. But like, again, a lot of these apply to horror in general. Yeah. But for games, it is mechanics that are very important. And also the manipulation of the expected. So like That's the... True. Like the controller I just mentioned with with the sound coming from there, or uh, I'm trying to think. a number of other horror games have done that for sure. Yeah, and like playing around with, in a say, you want good mechanics, but you also want to play upon players' fears of the failure of those mechanics, in sure. a sense, or playing against what they think should happen. So those are what I have so far for what makes a good horror game. Hmm. Good breakdown, Professor. Sure. Also, I, I, yeah, we're, I'm coming back to Alien Isolation again. Um, the ending of Alien Isolation is basically a cutscene, you know, but it, it, it's one of those things that it's proves okay. that if you do a cutscene, you could do it really well because I'm going to, I won't give the ending away because I don't know if everybody's played it. Louis? I haven't it? played it actually. Okay. Yeah. But the ending is, is chilling and does give you a sense of claustrophobia 
and it's a cutscene. And nine times out of ten, I will say like, if a game ends on a fucking cutscene, fuck you. But the, <laughs> but in this case, it really. What do you worked. mean? Like almost every game ends on some have kind of cutscene. But I get what you mean in this instance. I see what you mean, and like I, I thought it was fine. I just remember uh, to to Ian's numbers, I guess, to his sample size. I remember the gameplay of Isolation more than I remember the story, and that's probably true broadly of a lot of horror games excepting Resident Evil 4 because I remember both of them equally. Yeah. They were both fun and funny and but but also tight wise mechanically. But there were improvements upon what you've seen before. before. You're right. If it had just come out uh, I agree with uh, that. Sure. I mean but I mean you it's known beyond that at least for that is that every other sort of third person shooter that came after used that exact setup or like the camera angle from it. So like you know even Metal Gear and so forth. But uh no I mean I agree with all that. And I, you sort of kind of break it down, but I guess we can all agree that it sort of viscerally feels right. Like it's like the pornography thing may not be hard, but I'll know it when I see it if it affects <laughs> me some way, right? Exactly. I don't know. So you got anything yeah. other um, other ones you want to give shout outs to? I had a couple, but I don't know if you guys have any of you played Alan Wake. Yeah. Yes. Alan was a good say, call. Yeah. That's the one I was going to. I forgot. That definitely nice. has has all the elements. Yep. Of you know, it's it's at story wise, I think that it succeeded pretty good. And even it was it was an interesting take because I hadn't experienced a game like that. Yeah, no. At all, like I think pretty sure like cars came alive too, and at, at times I tried to run you fight and, shadow people, inanimate objects, and so forth. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's it just was it was just a Stephen King Stephen King video game. You're right about that. I'm really glad you brought that up. Good call, Louis. Excellent. I love that game. I played it like I think it's one of the only games that I've a hundred percent trophied on. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like. It, it's not quite what I was saying about Resident Evil 4, but it, it like toes that line. It even it name checks Stephen King like a lot, like outright here and there. But it also like, here's why I like it. Yes, it's a, it was a, a well done third person again. You basically um, the core mechanic is you have a flashlight and you have to shine it on the shadow monsters until you can shoot them. If you shoot them without breaking their like shadow shell, your bullets are wasted. And it was it was they they parsed out the um, resources well enough, but also it had. The story and the characters, side characters, had hints of Twin Peaks. That's how I remember. Yeah. It was like playing like a town that's like Twin Peaks, even like a reference to it. Whatever town you were in, it was like like Double Pines or whatever, <laughs> like something like that. Well, two things I was gonna say is one, I love the fact that it was divided into chapters, and they and I think for chapter two they did yes, this amazing, it was like a TV show. You're right. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and they'd always end with the song, and like chapter two ended uh, in the diner, and the way the camera panned around uh, panned around while the po- that one post song was playing was awesome. Mm-hmm. But the other thing about world building is you would go into these places, you know, a house or whatever, and you'd see a TV. And sometimes they do this like pseudo Twilight Zone thing. Yes. There's like Night Springs. Night Springs. Night Springs. That was Springs. fucking Amazing. awesome. You're right about that. Good call, Chris. You're right. That's, uh, that might be my second favorite thing from Alan Wake beyond just the general Twin Peaks atmosphere. It was such a good sort of in-universe meta joke, if you will. And they were really well done. I I remember looking up just the Night Springs episodes because they were so good. Yeah, one of the I mean, yeah. one of the items you picked up were literally chapters of the of yeah. Like yeah, pages, pages the of book. the book you're yeah. writing. Yeah. The plot was, of yeah, was just because of the nature hilarious. of the plot, it was sort of meta. But it, I mean it made for like a pretty good like if you're gonna have collectibles in a game like that, it made sense and it was not like frustrating like they didn't like overly uh, fuck you over by trying to like have too many of them or like in ridiculous places. Yeah, it was pretty good. And there were cups of coffee. What, just like the final Twin Peaks uh, connection. Another collectible was cups, of, mugs of coffee, or um, you know, you remember Ther- uh, thermos. You thought thermos yeah. of coffee. That's right. And the achievement is like a uh, damn fine cup of coffee <laughs> for getting them all. <laughs> so I have one last thing to say, so I can be a Debbie Dunner. All right. I want to talk about. A failing of horror games. Yes. Let's talk about ones that oh, were good. supposed to be effective or maybe we just didn't think uh, quite got there. Specifically, I think that repetition is the death of a horror franchise. Absolutely. 100%. Agreed. So if you look at Silent Hill, for instance, I love the original two. And a couple of them had decent like, – the problem was that it broke off from the original intent, which was to create a hell for each individual character sure. and started having – Things that thematically did not make sense for their right. psychological. Hundred percent agree with that. And but it became they felt that it expected to have uh, those creepy nurses, even if it 
didn't make sense. Yeah, even the story yeah. had no like reason for them to be there. Yeah. You're right about that. Or Resident, or, or Resident Evil, where you feel that you have to constantly top yourself from the last one until you get to. Now a, I have to, I have a twenty stage boss fight now. Yeah, in six or whatever. Yeah, sure. You're what right about that. Mr. Plinkett said, "Gotta have this. Too. Gotta add this too." Yeah, like we have to put this in. The, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're right about that. You're right that the core argument repetition is the death of it. Repetition, I think, creates frustration, and that's the death mm-hmm. of an immersive like. You know, it's not going to be cathartic. It'd be cathartic because, like, finally did the stupid level, but you're not having fun anymore. But that's mm-hmm. that's the thing about Left 4 Dead. I know it wasn't supposed to be like this great overarching story, but I mean, aside, I mean, there, the atmosphere is really great at to- at times, and the witch is always scary. Sure, but it is just repetition over. I mean, even within like you know the way the game's set up. I mean, like. I never even like finished like all four stories because I got bored <laughs> out of it. Like you know, I do I two did. and a half. There's like they're like four or five campaigns, sure. But like, I mean, that's it. There's no really story to it, so I don't know. I mean, I, I understand that. I'm just saying. I don't want to dwell too long on Left 4 Dead, but I mean, it no. was a, f- a fun game to play. Just there was no there was no narrative depth to it. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll say. But I want to give a couple shout outs too. I would say something that balanced it pretty well. Both of those uh, mechanics and story that is writing is Fear series and specifically Fear Two was quite good. The first fear was a, um, I believe, a late Xbox original game. So I mean, it looked, it would, you know, they had what they had graphically wise, technology wise at the time. It was good. Uh, it, it was a first person shooter, but with introducing you know horror elements, you're you fighting some soldiers and then you're fighting like headless soldiers and like stuff like that that you may have seen before. And then then that creepy monster would come out. But two looked better. It was an Xbox uh, 360 game. It just sort of improved upon everything as we just said of the first one, and I quite like that one. Any else? Got any um, ones you thought either you want to we even mentioned before want to give a shout out to or ones you thought failed or were bad? Um, well, I'm gonna say like Evil Within. Uh, mm, because I was waiting for you. I kind of I was trying I was hoping you would, I love like say that I right love here. anime I love horror ma- anime and the beginning of um of this reminded me of a combination between um Wicked City and Akira. And it started off really really great. And it had great mechanics, and then you you and then have they'd have like stupid dream sequence levels well. that were boring and rep, uh, repetitive, and they did nothing but waste your resources. So you got done with these things, and like basically you were out of ammo and all this stuff, and you were kind of fucked. Um, so I mean, I didn't finish that game because I got to a point where I just was just like, I'm sick of this bullshit. Not only that, but they were kind of following in the footsteps of horror games that came beforehand so it's repetitive on multiple levels in a sense that makes it a der- a derivative game yes uh both of that all of that i agree with and it's true i would say i was going to start sort of broadly get into this like it was every horror trope you've ever seen which you you can see like so asylum you know creepy hospital mm-hmm. creepy forest creepy village like everything that you've seen in a thousand other games but used generically like Alan Wake was basically a creepy forest, but they did it very well. And like creepy cabins, a couple here. You know what I mean? But they designed it well. It felt, if not fresh, it felt at least well used within their setting. Whereas Evil Within, I agree with you, Chris. It was funny. I, I, I will have to mention this. That was designed by, um, or developed by, I believe, uh, Murakami, who did the Res Evils, or at least four. So it's sort of like, I remember this game when it was Res Evil 4 and better. <laughs> yeah. And because of the plot, right? It was like, Basically, all dream. It was all psychotic dream. So they could do whatever they wanted, and it would it would necessarily make sense because it, it's a dream, anyways. But you know that's I mean? also part of the whole no consequence thing. Yes. But uh, the one thing that I, I I thought was funny about it, this just occurred to me was it kind of reminded me of Lego uh, of like a Lego game in parts because in order to get out of like this one thing where you had to open up this door, you had to do this and you had to do this. And yeah, then it was a series it, of uh, it was like kind of like some weird Rube Goldberg level. <laughs> yes, and it was it, it w- that kind of took you out of the horror immersion. But that can be effective and hard. Just wasn't in that game. Yeah. So I'll just pick, throw out some more random names. Right. Uh, Parasite Eve is often forgotten about, but that was very mm. good. It, in a different kind of an RPG of Resident Evil, mm. you also have sure. um, Slenderman and Five Nights at Freddy's. Slenderman was a good one. Five Nights These at Freddy's. Yeah. Uh, granted, True. they're not my necessarily my types of game because their sole purpose is to provide a jump scare for you. Uh, but I, I have to give them credit for what they do, and a lot of people like them. So, All right. Well, I know Louis is a big fan of the From Software games, so I was mm. thinking you might yeah. mention Bloodborne, and if so. Do you think it counts? Why or why not? Uh, I would say it counts. All right, but it it didn't quite scare me. 
Sure. So, but you're but jaded I, I right can't, now. I, I, it definitely has <laughs> Let me all the guys, characteristics of on, trying to scare let's me. Let's ask right. us all this. What would scare you nowadays? For, like, like, aren't you desensitized enough <laughs> that you... I don't know. It would take a lot, right? Is all I'm saying. No, like sometimes it, yeah. it, a lot of it has to be... I think Ian mentioned it uh, in his notes, like the unexpected. Like uh, Demon Souls, there was... It was uh, just a classic fantasy. Sure. You know, dragons, mm. there's witches, you know, and then you get... You know all these kinds of crazy monsters, but then there's one level in particular that it is is just I think it's I wrote down the Valley of Defilement and it's just absolutely <laughs> terrifying. So you have like insects that have people's heads. <laughs> yeah. You have, uh, oh, this, like the old fly. Like yeah, Lovecraftian just, but, monsters. Yeah, but it, it, I don't know. For me, it went to it, was it went to a level mm-hmm. that right. and no other levels like that. Well, see, that's the thing. Like that's sort of what we said about the Raven Home and like the what you were saying. As well, E. Well, Go actually, ahead. I want to ask you further about this based on my checklist here. All right. So, oh, he's, it, he's, you know, he's I, I agree with you Demon it. Souls. Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> um, we have atmosphere, which is true. Demon Souls is an incredibly cathartic game. Yeah. Uh, it has very good mechanics. I think they get better over time. Once you get still used to work. Sure. Well, it focused on characters and world building over a story. It dealt with the uncanny. And it... But the problem with with Bloodborne is, as you're saying, which checks all of it's rep, it's repetitive by now. You've seen everything Bloodborne has to show you mm. in prior games, so perhaps that's where it fails the test for being at least on that terms for you, Louis. I see yeah. what you're saying. That's interesting because to me nowadays, like aside from like a jump scare that I didn't see coming, which I think I can predict a lot of them. But sure, now and again, like a body drops or something. But when that happens, sure, I'll like viscerally jump but then i'll be like all right that was a good one like got me like that's how i think about it. like oh yeah a bunch of heads mounted on spikes i've seen that a lot but this one looks pretty good like you know what i mean so like freud you haven't experienced an uncanny feeling in a very long yes, time yes exactly mm-hmm. nothing horror is disturbing to me anymore i just appreciate it for the art design like really but that like that's pretty much more or less how i approach it nowadays i want to give a shout out to outlast mm-hmm. which the um uh psa also at the time of this recording they put out demo for outlast too but i really like the first one it had all those things you said. It was it was, like it was just hard enough. It wasn't repetitive, but it was you had no weapons at all. You just had to avoid people and like sort of the alien isolation, hide in closets or whatever, hide hide in lo- lockers, hide under beds, whatever, to get past all the psychopaths that you're getting through. It's an asylum thing, right? But it was so well designed. They used what they had sparingly, right? But like in the world, it, it was just an asylum. That's all you were. That's all it was. Bunch of rooms, a huge one. But it was so creepy feeling like the. It had like a sepia tone. Like it, hit, it hits every checkpoint you said, mm. and the mechanics were perfect. Basically, batteries were your only resource. So you can use night vision to see in the dark. If you were out of batteries, you were kind of fucked. Mm. But that was the only, or you could run away <laughs> and then get lost in the dark. But no, I, I think you're right. It hits that. So the night vision was on the camera, wasn't it? Yeah, you had to bring up your yeah. camera and then like uh, activate night vision, and that would suck down your batteries, which again were the only resource there. No, it's interesting you're saying. So basically, if you hadn't played Demon Souls, Louis. Would you think Bloodborne would have been more effective? Uh, I don't. Not for me. It's just. Yeah. I, it's just one of those things that just doesn't scare me. Fair enough. It, like horror wise, but I know, like I said, it it would definitely fit in that category just because of how the it, nature it does of succeed. It. Yeah, yeah, and it it is exactly like what the From games are. Like, sure, all I mean, of them had the elements, but that one, if they focus on pretty hard, and yeah, they did a good job. Just. Not for me. <laughs> That's no, There's like other, yeah, I don't, can't say that. One it's funny because anything. I have as yet to play Bloodborne, but we've been talking uh, off cast that I'm going to borrow it or at least attempt to soon. Just because like, I want to see all the Lovecraftian nightmarish monsters art wise, again, to appreciate the art design that went into this game and just to see like the world building that they have, whether or not it will scare me. I'm like, oh great, another deformed 50 arm, 20 dick, 30 eyed boss or whatever like as some weird conglomeration that's doing weird moves at me yeah man that's what they look like i'm just saying but that's what the bosses in bloodborne seem like but i can appreciate whatever art they're gonna have so was oh i wanted to mention soma actually has anyone played that aside from me that's no, so ma no. i watched you play a little bit of it yeah so it's um by the developers who did the amnesias i believe i can't remember the name offhand but i think it was more uh yes it had like monsters that so the mechanic was again you had no weapons you just had to go around and avoid them but if you looked at them too long then it would like basically insanity screen you to a game over so you had to avoid them so like you knew like sometimes you couldn't see them or they're hard to see but if they peeked around a corner and your screen went glitchy then you knew oh shit 
I got to turn around and like go around a different way or whatever. But the horror in that game, I think like it's more existential. Like it int- introduces like, you know, questions of reality of the nature of yourself. The monsters are sort of there. <laughs> like, I don't know. But it was still like a well designed either way. It was like they had two levels, right? Well, the uncanny the... doesn't always have to ass- like, sure. assess to like, body horror and things like that. It can be to your view of reality. No, you're right about that. And that's actually a good segue. One more I want to give a shout out to is Layers of Fear. I think I mentioned on the bonus points maybe somewhere. But there's a walking sim again style. So again, no weapons, no resources really. You just go through a Victorian mansion. But it would change. So it would be like the sort of Silent Hill thing. You would go to a gallery and then like a million paintings would show up. And you turn around and then something else would be. There would be like a brick wall in front of you. Or like, you know, you go around a corner and the, like the room would just repeat itself for five times until you could like get out or decided to go the opposite way and then the exit would appear. So it goes like, oh, it's all like sort of distortion. But it made sense to the story because you were an artist going insane. So I kind of like that. Oh. Got any other ones you want to shout out to or anything we missed? Uh, oh, Castlevania's. Two? Yeah, um, that's true. The old school ones, yeah. Uh, Ghouls and Goblins, Super yes. Ghouls and Goblins is a good one. Oh, uh, the, I mean, like the old arcade games like sure. Carnival and... Uh, I think Ghouls and Goblins was an arcade game. Yeah, but, but I'm talking way. about the shooter. Oh, the old school. Oh, yeah. Oh, the House of the Dead. Yeah, shit that shit like stuff. that. Uh, Clock Tower mm. was a big one back That's in the day. That's a good one, yeah. I mean, the, it's existed for... I mean, if you want to count E.T. for Atari... <laughs> uh, I don't know if I do, but I see what you're getting <laughs> but at. They've existed for a long... Uh, every generation of our... Like, um, Phantasmagorias. Yes. Uh, like, that's true. There's a lot of them out there. Nah, that's all true. So, um... No, I think we discovered we covered it quite well. And we got to the core of what makes probably effective horror, at least horror that's going to affect us in the same general way. But that b- leads me to sort of I'll sign off with this. Right now, around this time, and definitely uh, in months to come, VR is going to be picking up. And uh, like for example, they're, they're going to do the new Resident Evil Seven is going to be a VR like version of it. You can play it in VR if you want, and a number of other games like that. So. I'm just saying, like, maybe that's the next level of a... Maybe, maybe you can play Bloodborne in VR. <laughs> it might get you, or whatever, you know, or whatever games are going to make, you know, a design specifically for a horror VR experience. So that should be interesting to check oh, out. Yeah, that's, that's the next step. For sure. I mean, that's, yeah. And it's going to be amazing. I agree. I'm looking forward to it. Our friends over at Arcane Reality are working on a horror game as well. <laughs> and we might be talking to them about that. But we'll see if this makes it into the episode. So... <laughs> Uh, I mean, anything else? Anyone got any closing thoughts or anything for at the mention? Or again, anything you want to shout out to or give a raspberry to? Be like, you sucked as a horror game or whatever. No, I was just going to say that um, I was going to bring up the DLCs uh, for yes, Fallout. That's right. We went to get this. There, so there's, off with that. There is um, on a. Um, for my favorite is probably like Fallout Vegas. Yep. Because they have this thing called Dead Money. And it's. It was the first DLC for Vegas. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's this horror. It's kind of like, you know, it's this horror sci fi thing. It's it's definitely really creepy. Great atmosphere. It is legitimately jump scare. It's it, it's it. Kind I wouldn't of. call it a horror game, but I'd call it a horror themed uh, science fiction. Yeah, game. a yeah. horror themed little add on. I agree. Like so, uh, just a refresher if anybody has played it or is unfamiliar. You start out. You go to a uh, abandoned or buried casino, I believe, from before the Great War in the Fallout mythology, but it's covered or a, a thick red mist, like envelops the city which poisons you like what every time you're outside in it you, your health is going down and the enemies ha- are creepy gas masks on Kenny valley thing right they're faces essentially they all wear like variations of gas masks and there's implied to be like some kind of like supernatural like not just humans doing it like they get up like it, oh that's what it was chris it was awesome that's right now i remember this those enemies you have to headshot them or stab them in the head otherwise they'll get back up yeah like, they'll just keep coming at you. So you're sinking resources into him while choking to death on the red mist. It's and, very tense. It keeps up the, the you know. And there's also, your, like, 101 booby traps all yeah, over the there's place. there's fucking mines so, everywhere. So, so the red fog is hard to see in, okay? Yeah, so it's just, so, like, a lot of hurdles. But you, but you have to get through it quickly. But you, if you go up the stairs, you have to watch out for tripwires because yeah. they could be booby yeah, trapped. Well, if you hear a beeping, like, oh, shit. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it, it just worked on like every level of that game. No, you're right. I agree. And the other one um, I'll follow you up, you're going to bring up is Point Lookout for Fallout 3. Yep. Which we enjoy. And I think, Ian, you also like that one a lot. I did. Yeah, so that one's sort of um, in the swamps of the marshlands, I believe, like outside yes. the Capital Wasteland. 
and it was all like it's basically deliverance gone yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> like yeah. mutated deliverance yeah, through some point lookout yeah yeah and, um and so it also had a lovecraft little thing like bethesda likes to drop in little lovecraft things here and there so the main game had one like dunwich house and there was some dunwich little thing you could find in point lookout and bring back to the dunwich house to like that so i'll leave with that one wait Go ahead. Uh, i was I'm gonna sorry. say i want one more thing on okay. fallout and i Go ahead. i told scott this and anybody listening to this if you have not played nuka world when you go, when you find the mansion, because you're going to find a mansion. Public service announcement on, about Nuka World. Go ahead. Save the game before you enter the mansion, because the mansion is really cool, and I went through it a few times. Um, so that's my shout out. That's my recommendation. Uh, Fallout Four for Nuka World uh, is a good game overall, and but this mansion thing was really nice. Right. So remember to check out the mansion in Nuka World. So my final one is uh, we sort of uh, referenced him a lot this season. Mostly due to me being influenced by outside things outside the stars that uh, they actually made. I think I mentioned this on the Matsudo uh, Shadows Over Innsmouth episode that th- they made a game based on Shadows Over Innsmouth called Dark Corners of the Earth. Call of Cthulhu colon Dark Corners of the Earth. Also a late Xbox original game. It was not the greatest graphics, of course, but to what you were saying, it, it hits a game that I saw early on that hit all the check marks. And also, like, it's hardcore. There's no HUD. Like, you can't even choose it if you want to. You have to remember how many bullets you have, how many bullets you have stored, how many bullets are in your gun, and injuries to you are done by, like, arm, head, leg, chest, and you need different things to take care of those injuries. You need, like, a splint for your legs, but that won't help you with your arm, really, or, like, a chest wound, right? You need, like, antiseptics, different resources that are specific to, you know, keeping your character alive. So that was pretty good, you know. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's pretty hardcore. Yeah, it was, it might become frustrating, but I think they towed the line really well. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's based on one of my favorite stories by my favorite influences. So I gotta give that a shout out. So I think that'll do it pretty much. I think we covered. I think we again, like I said, figured out what makes a horror game tick, or at least the ones that we think work. And if they're missing enough aspects, then they're just not gonna be effective. Not gonna uh, have any catharsis for you. That's absolutely true. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been our Syntax Era Halloween special episode for 2016. I, of course, have been Scott Thurlow, here with Louis Duran. Have a good night. Janie Manzer. I gotta go get a doctorate on this. And Chris Morgan. Voodoo as much as you can hoodoo. Indeed. And we'll see you next time in the next Horror World. This has been Syntax Error. Thank you, as always, for listening. And we will see you next time. Music by Stephen Hermosi. Editing and engineering by Chris Morgan. Syntax Error is part of a Lost Signals Productions, all rights reserved.